Let's talk more trade rumors and, of course, get you ready for tonight's AHL Calder Cup Finals game and more on today's episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're bringing you your favorite team every single day. Today's episode of Locked On Kraken brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and you will get $20 off your first purchase when you use promo code Locked On NHL. We'll get back into that. In a little bit, if we're meeting for the first time, hello, my name is Erica L. Ayala. I am your host of Locked On Kraken. And for those everydayers and OGers, you might recognize the intro music is the old school one. That's also a little bit of a explainer as to why this video is a little bit later than what we've been posting. <coughs> Excuse me, having some technical difficulties. I'm hoping it doesn't impact our live stream tonight. But in the case that it does, we will host the live stream on Black Rosie Media. That's what we're using right now. Uh, so just look for updates later in the day. But we are going to have a watch party because it's game four. It's a Firebirds game day. And I can't wait to get into it. But there are more trade rumors. And the latest one on the block regarding the Seattle Kraken is that maybe we are in the Patrick Line conversation. That's right. Patrick Line is reportedly uh, forcing the issue, getting out of Columbus. And one of the stops, at least according to Elliot Friedman, could be the Seattle Kraken. Now that brings with it a few different things. And in the first segment, we're going to talk about what's going on with Patrick, what's he done in the last few years, and why people are saying this could be a good fit for the Seattle Kraken. In the second segment, I'm going to break down a few additional reports and maybe why the Kraken wouldn't consider this, or if we did, what we would have to give up, including potentially offloading a goaltender, that conversation I actually want to have on another episode. So I have a few comments from our Locked on Kraken insiders that we're going to get into regarding what's good value here. And then we'll close getting you ready for tonight's Locked uh, or tonight's Firebirds game as they look to take on the Hershey Bears and take a commanding lead in the Calder Cup final. So we've got a jam-packed show. I hope you're ready. So let's just get into it. Now, I know a lot of our insiders have already mentioned this, but we have some great people that have been reporting on this. Everyone from our very own Allison Lucan and, of course, Shana, who is her co-host over at Too Many Men. And uh, I actually want to start with Shayna's reporting for The Athletic. Um, so Shayna Goldman wrote yesterday for The Athletic, uh, a summer of change is only getting started in Columbus. Um, talks about a few of the moves. But um, there are reports, of course, that Patrick Laine, uh is looking to get traded. And the general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets is trying to make this happen. What could this potentially mean? Now, the cap hit, uh, Shayna writes, is one of the challenges. He has two years left on his contract, carrying a cap hit of $8.7 million. Even with the cap hit increasing by $4.5 million to $88 million next season, that's quite the jump, not every team has the flexibility to take on this deal. Now, while Shayna in her reporting for The Athletic doesn't talk specifically about the Seattle Kraken, of course, our very own Jeff Baker does talk about how this could impact the Seattle Kraken. Specifically, he's talking just about what the Kraken might do. But I want to take you over to the hockey news and a few things that were reported. Uh, I should say that were reported um, 
on the 32 Thoughts podcast. The coaching change from Haxtell to Bilesma, I think there is a real push in that organization to be more aggressive. And I see Patrick Liney as something that makes sense there for people who want to be more aggressive and for the people who want to be a little bit more conservative. So that's an interesting comment. Is it a little bit of best of both worlds? Um, and this is what we also got from Julian over at the Hockey News. The Kraken have built the organization through the draft and now have the resources to give those drafted players the supporting cast they deserve. So according to Shayna, not every team is going to have the salary cap space, but we're hearing from Jeff Baker. We're hearing from the Hockey News. And of course, we've talked about it here on Locked on Kraken that we do have cap space, and that was even before the, the cap increase. So now it's just a matter of, does this make good sense? And in some of Shayna's reporting, she is talking about some of uh, what Patrick Laine's upside is. Um, you know, he is definitely good at um, assisting on shots and chances, creating shots, uh, in that 95 percentile range there um, and creating chances for shots, 82 percent. He assists on shots at 76 percent clip and assists on chances at 66 points uh, percent. Um, you know, some of the things we have to look at is uh, also exits, controlled exits. I wouldn't say there's anything too strong here, but I do like the numbers on the retrieval. Uh, and so this is uh, data from the all three zones project that Shana has in her write-up, but she's talking about teams like Carolina. She's talking about teams like even Utah, Montreal, Nashville is on here. Uh, the New Jersey Devils, the St. Louis Blues, the Rangers, and even the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, overall, whether we're reading what Shayna is putting out there, whether we're listening to what's on the 32 Thoughts podcast, reading the hockey news, there are a few things that we should know about Patrick Mine. One is that the injuries. The guy hasn't stayed healthy. And you know how I feel about guys who have potential upside on offense but don't stay healthy. There was a video that actually locked on crack and got tagged in, and Andre Burakovsky is supposed to be our big goal scorer, right? Do you know that uh, among other people, well, all of these guys have been, except for Matty Beneers, all the guys on the top 10 in scoring have been with the Seattle Kraken since the inaugural season. But the fact that Brandon Tanev is scoring more than Andre Burakovsky, the fact that Alex Wenberg is on that list, I mean... Just as an example, we've never seen a healthy Andre Burakovsky. I don't want a Berkey 2.0. I really don't. I absolutely don't. And I don't know that you can say for sure that Patrick is going to be healthy. Now, if we assume he's going to be healthy, what do we like? A lot of people saying that potentially he can, uh, or Maddie Beneers in particular, can benefit from being with someone who knows how to score goals. You want playmakers with Patrick Laine. I do think there are a decent amount of playmakers that if they had an option, Andre Burakovsky or somebody else, that maybe that could be good. We talked about it when we were talking about world championships. Why was it that Berkey was good with his national team but couldn't quite get things going with the Kraken? I talked about it a lot, how it felt like Berkey sometimes plays hero hockey. So is that a little bit of a fault or a flaw, especially knowing that he was injured? Is there just a little bit of communication that needs to be refined between Andre Burakovsky and his teammates? Was that a coaching issue that will be alleviated now that we have Dan Bilesma? I don't know the answers to these questions. I don't think anyone, at least not right now, knows the answer to those questions. But do I now want to do that with not one, but two players? I don't know. I'm kind of thinking no on that alone. So, you know, uh, that that's tough. That's a tough one for me. The injury thing really is, is a kind of hard pass for me. That being said, the salary cap has a lot of people wondering if the Seattle Kraken will have to give up anything. And the good news is that mm, we might not really have to. Um, I think we're talking in the 8, 9 million AAV for line A, that is something that the Kraken could swing. And could they potentially bring that down even further by sweetening the pot for Columbus? What would they want? 
We've already established we're not giving you Shane Wright. Stop it. We're not giving you Shane Wright, so stop it. Uh, second rounder, prospect. Is that even something that we would have to do? Right now, we don't know. This is what I do know. This is what I do know. I like that the Seattle Kraken are actually in conversations around some movement in the offseason. We're marching closer to July. Of course, we have unfinished business in Coachella Valley, which we'll talk about later on the show. But for me, I like that at least we're having these conversations. So coming up on Locked on Kraken, I want you to hear from what some of our insiders are either saying as comments or asking us. And then I know I said I was going to talk about it at a later date, and we're going to get into it deeper. But another part of this or any trade conversation regarding the Seattle Kraken is how does this make us better? And the one area that a lot of people think we need to get better at goaltending. So we'll talk about a little bit of that coming up on today's episode of Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by one of my personal favorites favorites. And that is game time. I tell you all the time, I travel a lot. When I'm traveling, I want to make sure that uh, I get to experience things like the locals get to experience them. And that means going to shows, going to concerts, going to sporting events. And the best way to find your last minute tickets at the lowest price is to head over to the game time app. Now I do have the game time app on my, uh, I have it on my mobile phone, I uh, I make sure that I'm checking out the game time deals and things of that nature. I love that I can see the view from my seats. I love the game time guarantee, which if I find uh, uh, tickets in the same section, in the same row for the same event for less than what I paid on game time, I get 110% of my money back. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You're not going to regret it. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed on Game Time. I hope you have as much fun as I plan to have on my travels throughout the summer. Thanks as always for making Locked On Crack and a part of your daily destination. All right. Before I get into the goaltending thing, which, you know, I know is huge, I just want you to uh, to hear what some of the insiders are saying. And if you're not a part of our subtext community, you can become an insider. Check the show notes. I have all the information there for you, uh, but you're going to want to text I want to text 918-731-3154. Again, that's 918-731-3154. I'm revamping the insider community. So be a little patient with me as I get that onboarded. And of course, uh, you know, we have some help now uh, with Seth Tupel helping out. So we'll be able to get you going there. Uh, we have some fun things in store over at Locked On uh, planning for that. But here's what some of the insiders who are sticking with us have to say. I, I sent out a message for you. If you're not familiar, uh, the subtext community or the Locked On Insider community is a direct text messaging platform. You can ask me questions. I can ask you questions. We haven't really done any game day texting because uh, I've been doing the live streams, but you have questions about something that you're seeing in a game, things like that. So I texted our community today because I knew I was going to talk about Patrick Liney. Here are some of the responses that I got to the trade rumor that I thought were interesting. And again, it, it's one blast that goes out on my end, and then you can message me directly. So we've got... Um, uh, I'll say Bill, Brian, and Jeff are the comments that I want to focus on. Now, this is something that we heard from a few other reporters, but saying, hey, I like the idea of Patrick Line under Dan Bilesma, but not so much under Dave Haxtell. And that is something that we're starting to see more prevalent in news media. I liked Dave 
I understand the limitations with Dave, especially leaning into Dan a little bit more. I'm not mad at the move. I could have understood if we stuck stuck around a little bit, but the more and more removed we are from it, I kind of like the move, especially if, and I talked about this with Stu Bickle, my segment on Stu Bickle yesterday, especially if Disco Dan can move us to better defense, how much alliteration can you fit into a sentence? If Disco Dan improves our defense, I am all here for it. That was a short, that was um, a downside of the Dave era. And you know, it burned my grits. Uh, also, uh, it's a risk for sure. But he's only signed for two years is what one of our insider was saying. So it's a limited risk. And that's where I go back and forth. And this is where, you know, the goaltender conversation comes in with regard to not just Chris Drieger, but also Philip Grubauer. A lot of people don't like Gruby's con uh, contract. I understand it. It's not the worst for us, but it certainly stands out. Given what we've gotten in goaltending, is all of that Gruby's fault? No, I do think, again, we're not a great defensive team. <laughs> I know I take hits at advanced analytics dang near every episode, but I mean, come on, come on, come on. We can't watch this team and say they're good at defense. We can't watch this team and say that we don't overtax our goaltenders. Now, the thing is, I do think there's a conversation to have about Philip Grubauer, and that's why I wanted to mention it here. Um, because some people saying, oh, well, will we be too strapped and would we need to offload something? And if one of the things we need to offload, a la in one of the articles, they talk about the Nashville Predators. I think it might even be Shana's article where it's like, well, that's what uh, Nashville had to do. I think um, Jeff also writes about that, right? Well, that's what Nashville had to do. Are we in that same situation? And I think for a lot of different reasons, the answer is no. That said, I think there's a separate conversation to have about Philip Grubauer. We've obviously been talking about Chris Drieger. And of course, that means we have to talk about Joey Decord and what our goaltending looks like. But for this particular example, I don't think it fits. Now, it might fit for other people that we might be looking at, but not with Patrick Laine. Um and again, uh, Jeff saying, I know Allison talks about him on Too Many Men, of course, uh, and then kind of says that he didn't get to listen to the whole thing. But Shayna does break this down. Now, again, Shayna, one of the co-hosts, along with Sarah as well. Uh, but I haven't listened to the episode yet. I have an appointment in a little bit that I'll be getting ready for. And so I'll listen to it. And then for the insiders, Jeff in particular, I'll get back to you on what I think about what Too Many Men said. But uh yeah, I agree with you. It's a limited risk, so that's why you kind of like it. But just because it's a limited risk doesn't mean it's a good risk. What are some of our other insiders saying? Well, <laughs> I will tell you. Um, okay, I loved this. More fins equals more wins. Heck yeah, I freaking love that. Of course, talking uh, about... Um, you know, some of our players, including someone who is probably going to be uh, due for a contract extension, restrictive free agent, Ellie Tolvanen. Uh, so more fans equals more wins. Translation, I'd like line A, but not if it involves moving Tolvanen. In my mind, that's not that's a non-negotiable. I already said we're not trading Shane. We're not getting rid of Tolvi. I don't think we've seen the best of Tolvi. If you watched our... Um, if you watched our um, watch along, which again, hoping to have another one, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with our back end. You know, it's just technical stuff. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but so we might have to relocate the watch along, but we're going to have a watch along tonight. I'm going to be watching. I will definitely, if you're a locked on crack and insider, I will text you. So, you know, directly where I will be and everyone else, make sure you're checking on YouTube and on social media, specifically on Twitter. No, I do not call it X, um, because I'll have the updates and the link there, but the insiders, you'll get that directly texted to you. Um, yeah. So, and Kimmel, who of course knows Ellie Tolvanen and knows what system he likely works best in because he didn't work in Nashville under the system that they had, um, really likes the idea of Dan Bilesma and Tolvanen working together. Haven't realized the full potential there untapped. And I told you that third line, second, third line, I guess, depending, I liked what Yanni Gord, Oliver Bjorkstrand, uh, and Tolvi were doing. I want to see 
those individual players and maybe them together, I don't know, be able to do a little bit more. So I'm with you, Brian. That was from Brian. And um, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, this is from Bill. Um, so here we go. I like line A with Winnipeg, not so much with Columbus with injuries and diminished production. How much salary do they keep? Deep dive. Uh, shout out to the homies. Uh, suggested crack and take on all of the contract and thus may not need to give as much. And I think whether you're watching Emerald City Hockey or listening to them, I'm sure Sound of Hockey, I haven't checked actually if Sound of Hockey has tapped in on this just yet, but I think all of us, anyone who's taken a look at Cap Friendly, I've talked about it for sure on Locked on Kraken, we can take on this contract and be okay. It's just a matter of what Jeff was saying uh, is this the right amount of risk? I do not want another <laughs> Andre Burakovsky situation. Like, I don't think I can take it. If you're an everyday or an OG or you know, I've got nothing against Andre Burakovsky. I just don't like that we put all of our eggs, offensive eggs, into a broken basket. And it's not his fault. I, you know, I think there was some somebody once. I know who it is, but if you listen to the show, you know who it is too. But was kind of trying to ask in a media scrum that I was at, oh, do you think like Berkey needs to change how he plays the game because he seems to be more accident prone? And da -da 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 -da. No, 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 no. Let the guy play hockey. Let the guy play hockey. It's a contact sport, baby. And you know, there's contact that I don't even think is necessary, but it's a contact sport. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't, I would assume. The same goes here with Patrick. That being said, that doesn't mean that you kind of want to fall into the trend of getting guys that are injured. I think that's part of what obviously happened with Drieger. It's happening with Grubauer. You know, how many injuries can we take to players that are key? And that goes back to just overall construction of the roster, whether it's Patrick, whether it's offloading a goaltender, whether it's a uh, Burkowski or something else. I've told you there are holes. There are multiple holes for me when it comes to this roster and that one way or another has to get fixed, but we're not going to answer that in just one episode. I know that was a lot. I like zoomed through it. I have so many thoughts, but here's the thing. It's the off season and we're going to talk about it, but I'm going to tap this or cap this conversation because we have to talk about the Coachella Valley Firebirds because they're playing for something real. They're not having off season conversations yet in the Valley. And that's because there's still some unfinished business. And that quest for the Calder cup continues tonight. Again, there will be a watch party. I will be live somewhere. We just got to work out some technical kinks, but make sure if you're not already subscribe, subscribe to locked on crack and hit the notification bell. That's how you'll know when I go live and also use the community tab. If I can't go live on our, on our website or, or excuse me, on our YouTube channel, for whatever reason, Check the community page on YouTube. Also make sure you follow at Locked on Kraken. You can also follow at Black Rosie Media because if we don't go live on Locked on Kraken, we'll be on Black Rosie Media. But we're going to make it happen. I'm not missing game four. And I'm going to tell you why I'm excited for game four and give you my keys to the game to get a Firebirds win. That's coming up on Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken also brought to you by our newest friends. And uh, that is, of course, Ultimate GM. Now, I want to take a moment to bring up one of uh, ever. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an NHL GM and managing your own hockey franchise? Do you think you could run the Kraken better than Ron Francis? <laughs> I mean, if you listen to this show, sometimes it feels like I think maybe I could. So, if you want that dream to come true, this is most definitely the game for you. You can manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead it to glory. Ultimate Hockey GM is completely free and playable online. Play on the go as you want, when you want. By the way, Locked On Network listeners get a 100% free boost on their franchise when using promo code LOCKEDONNHL in the game store. So make sure you check it out. 
To download the game, visit hockeygm.app. That's hockeygm.app. You can also look it up in uh, the app stores and, of course, check out the show notes for more information. Ultimate Hockey GM, start your dynasty today. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily destination. And, you know, we had that ad read. We were talking about building a dynasty. Well, the dynasty in the Kraken organization might very well start with the Coachella Valley Firebirds. And I sure hope it will continue with the Seattle Kraken. Uh, but I also want to let you know that uh, June 28th, of course, is the draft. And looks like the Seattle Kraken have some fun things planned for you. So we'll keep you updated with all of that. What do you need to know going into this game? Well, I told you. It's all about the three Fs, baby. We're going to have four check. We're going to be fast and we're going to have fun. And I add free. I want to see a loose, free Firebirds game. And we got after it in game three and we can do it again in game four. Uh, a few stats for you to know going into this game. I talked about it on the other, uh, or was it yesterday or the day before? Either way, I talked about it this week. The, the Firebirds undefeated at home, undefeated at home in the playoffs, seven and O oh, five and three on the road. Now the away record for the Hershey bears is three and four. So we can get some, uh, we, we can get some momentum for sure. And of course, winning game four, when we're up two to one, would mean that we take a series lead of three to one. And if you do the math and you put the things together, then you know what I'm saying. Then we have a few games to take care of unfinished business. I'm not going to say it, but I'm saying it. You know what I'm saying? You get me. Power play. Oh, 10 of 54. 10 of 54. Jessica Campbell, we know, runs the power play. I've talked about it before. Nothing but love for, for Soupy. Uh, and we got to do a little bit better. Power play is a uh, 23.19% clip for the Hershey Bears. The, um, the power play at home, though, is better than it is on the road. 25% clip for the Firebirds at home compared to 11.5% on the road. The away power play is pretty solid, though, for the Hershey Bears. They are at a 25.9% clip, so they edge out Coachella Valley just ever so slightly. Penalty kill. Stu Bickle is responsible for the PK for the Firebirds. The PK overall, 78% clip, 78.57 to be exact. At home, it is 70%. 70.37% better on the road. So in our last 10 games, we're eight and two. I'll take that. One loss to the Admirals, one loss as of right now to the Hershey Bears. Five, four, and one are the Hershey Bears in their last 10 games. We have the better record. We have the momentum. I forget who I was talking to. Um, I think it was probably Anne. And just saying, when you enter Akrasher Arena, whoa, it's loud. It is loud. <laughs> I don't even know how you hear yourself thinking there. And that is a testament to all you fans. And that's why we are going to make this watch along happen one way or another. No one's going to win the cup tonight, but the momentum swing could be massive if, when, the Firebirds take the win. So what are the keys to the game for me? I think you have to, again, focus on those three, let's say four Fs. We're going to be fast. We're going to forecheck, we're going to be have fun, and we're going to skate freely. I also want to see the Firebirds be able to limit the breakaway opportunities for the Hershey Bears. That's how they can attack us. That's how they have attacked us in the past. Um, and so that's what we need to keep an eye on. Now, the depth, the depth, that's a, that's a throwback. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, with, with JD, we talked about the depth of this team. If you look at the top 10 goal scorers in the AHL playoffs, you're not going to see many Firebirds. 
that's because it's a balanced scoring. Uh, you know, we had some people get on the board in the last game for the first time this season. Everyone's capable, and we need to play like that. What I loved about game three is we got bodies to the net. Some of those garbage time goals. Okay. It doesn't have to be pretty. It has to be effective. And the puck retrieval, 50-50 pucks, that's effort, right? That's what I want to see. Um, and and so, you know, I, I, I like our chances. I like our chances. And that's also, uh, you know, I, I threw in definitely more than three things there. But again, let's focus on the three Fs. Let's really focus on not trying to play the perfect game, but playing the most effective game. And that comes from second chance opportunities, controlling rebounds, and then defensively, not only improving, or I should say, keeping the PK going, but you have to eliminate, eliminate the breakout chances for the Hershey Bears. We've got so much to look forward to with this Firebird squad. Of course, we're all excited to see Dan Bilesma and some of our, uh, you know, you know, new kids that we're going to get here in action. Uh, but first, we have to win two more games. Is it gonna be? Is it gonna start tonight? I say, why wait another minute for something that we could have done? Well, the song says yesterday, but uh, today we we shouldn't wait. We should not wait. Let's get it done. Just take control of this series, and you can do that tonight in front of your fans. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another. Hold fast. Stay true. Let's go cracking, and let's get fired up because it's a game day. I'm so excited. I'm going to have a live watch along. It's going to be on YouTube. Just make sure you are following Locked on Kraken on Twitter. And of course, subscribe on YouTube. That's how you will know until our watch along or our next episode. Peace out, everybody.